there's plenty of ways to sell something and make money doing what you love to do, Mm -hmm. whether it's corporate or an Mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the KTS Success Factor podcast for women, where we talk about challenges senior female leaders face in being happy and successful at work. I'm your host, Dr. Sarah E. Brown. My guest today is Stacy Hall. She has coached thousands of entrepreneurs on how to attract sales, satisfaction, and success. She's a best-selling author, a TEDx presenter, and a leading social media marketing expert. She is founder of Success with Stacy Hall and of the groundbreaking social media marketing training program, Go For Yes. That program has helped thousands of people attract more sales, customer and employee satisfaction and success. And she has a new book out, Selling from Your Comfort Zone, The Power of Alignment Marketing. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Stacy, welcome. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm happy to be in your studio and I'm thrilled that you asked me. As I told you, I'm always happy to have somebody who can make sales understandable and doable because it is certainly not in my comfort zone. So thank you for being here. If you were to characterize the number one problem that you're helping female business leaders address, what would you say that it is? Well, I always say that what I find amongst most female business leaders or entrepreneurs is that they went into business because they have a passion and they have a message they want to get out. What causes them frustration is that message is not getting out for a variety of reasons. It usually it's because they're not really sure who wants to hear that message. They're mm-hmm. looking for validation before they just start talking. So what I love to do is support women entrepreneurs who are frustrated about getting their message out. And I help them connect with their ideal audience, get in alignment with their message and the message their audience wants to hear from them. And as a result, they increase their income and they leave a legacy that lives on long after they're gone. So do you bump into many people like me that are just a little bit fearful of the whole sales process or sales in general? If I was asked to create it as a percentage, let's say 99% of the people that I've supported, my clients, my prospects, the people I see everywhere, that's sales is a dirty, dirty word. (laughs) So how do you reframe this so that people can, can start listening and acting on it? Okay, so the very first thing, and I'm not the first person to say this, and even in my book, Sarah, and which is behind me, the, the selling from your comfort zone, I'm not the only voice in this book. I made a point to gather voices who have been doing sales by not getting out of their comfort zone and being very successful at it for years. So what is it that we all have in common is we don't make sales something different than what we do in everyday life. And that doesn't mean we're always going around selling people. We recognize that human beings are human beings, that we meet people. Every We meet people in the grocery store. We meet people at restaurants. We meet people. Now we meet people on social media. Hmm. We don't put targets on their heads. The first thing we think about is not they're a prospect. We think they're a person. So we Mm. replace the prospect brand with the person. And then we just start getting to know people. What inevitably happens when we make friends and those friends trust us, we get to know people, they like us, we like them, they we trust them, they trust us, they'll come to us and say they're struggling with something. Hmm. They're in pain. A child is hurting. They're not sure what to do about this situation. They'll ask for our advice. We happen to have some things usually that can help them because we made a point to develop the friendship with these folks. 
then it's a suggestion. It's not a, I got to make the sale. It's a suggestion. And so that's what I call my alignment marketing formula is when you get to the point where you can make a suggestion and a friend is free to take that suggestion or not. And is that the essence of selling from within your comfort zone or is there more to it than that? It is the essence. It starts, and that's the other thing that I think we all, everybody in the book does differently than the majority of folks. And I'm going to give credit to the majority of folks who have done a very good job of following the sales training that's mostly out there. The problem is that sales training trains people to do two things. First, they tell you get out of your comfort zone. You can't be comfortable and make sales or be successful. I say be us on that. <laughs> the second thing they teach is expect objections. Because the way that they teach people to go out and make sales, it's going to produce objections. But what if there was another way of meeting people and getting to know them that doesn't produce objections? That's I what I it. teach. That's what I teach in selling from your comfort zone. That's the steps. So the essence is we begin with ourselves. And if that seems selfish, oh, well. I start by thinking about what are my core values? How do I want people to treat me? How do I want to treat other people? What do I feel passionate and comfortable about in my life? What do I enjoy in my life? And Sarah, I could just go on for the next whatever mm -hmm. from here. So I know you've got other questions for me, but I'm saying when we start from there, recognizing our comfort zone is the place where we feel skillful, confident, and empowered. That confidence allows us to not be brash, to not be pushy, to not be spammy, but to be confident that the right people are going to want what we have when we make suggestions. And then I teach you in the book, how to follow that. Although I'm happy to share some of those steps here too. And, and I am going to ask you about that. But when you're doing that, when you're actually in your comfort zone like that, you've got to be sending out energy that is a lot more positive and you're kind of attracting people as opposed to pushing people. Because exactly. they, they just naturally want to be with you. Yes. The right ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And the other ones don't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll laugh at this or cry. I wasn't sure what to do at the beginning either. Now I just laugh a little bit. I had somebody tell me once when I was teaching this approach at a workshop, because I don't follow up. I do no follow up the way it's taught by other trainers. Mm -hmm. And they always say your sales, right? The profits right. and the follow up. I do no follow up. I had a woman get very angry at me and she said, well, I would how rude basically is what her the essence was she said if i hadn't followed up with a particular person 13 times i would never have gotten the sale and i looked at her and i said have you gotten another sale since no but i wouldn't have gotten <laughs> that sale if i hadn't followed up 13 times in my world that energy could have gone into meeting 13 people who wanted to say yes mm -hmm. Yep. And that then feel, stay. And then that feels much more natural to me. Hi, this is Sarah Brown again, the host of the KTS Success Factor podcast for women. I hope you are enjoying this episode and gaining some tips and inspiration on how you can be happier, more successful, and experience less stress at work. If you would like to learn more about how you can take control of your career and do it your way, visit sarahebrown.com. There you will be able to download a free chapter from my book, Let Your Personality Be Your Career Guide. It contains information and exercises on how you can identify your unique interests, strengths, and needs, and translate that into career goals that are just right for you. Now back to this informative episode. So one of the things that resonates with me, because I'm I'm always extolling to 
the people that are listening to me is get clear about your interests, your strengths and your needs and stay there because when you're there and you're happy, you're going to be more successful and people are going to be natural. People that should be will naturally be drawn to you. So I like the whole concept of selling from within your comfort zone because you, in essence, do that. But you've got some other catchy phrases that are memorable in your book that I want to delve into, because I think they will help to explain your your approach. So tell us a little bit about the rubber band effect. Oh, I'm so glad. And by the way, you and I are completely aligned. I'm just so loving you. I love what you teach and how you share it and how you support your clients. The rubber band effect is how we expand and grow because that's the other people say to me well you don't grow if you're in your comfort zone well that's not true i learned to do something that i want to learn to do more of that or i want to take those skills and expand it into a new area so if we think of the zone in which we feel empowered as having a circumference That circumference is like a rubber band and that rubber band will give. Every rubber band has give to it. You can make it bigger. If you go slowly, it will be able to encompass more. If you go fast, you are likely to break it. And there's all sorts of phrases in our vocabulary about being bent out of shape, being pushed to the breaking point reaching the breaking point. Mm -hmm. This is what people are saying. That's what happens when we tell them to get out of their comfort zone. They fall apart. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. They go into fight or flight, according to numerous psychologists who have studied this. Mm -hmm. Or my parlance, they go into stress and then they exhibit behavior that is counterproductive. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. That's a great memorable thing and all the more reason to stay inside your your comfort zone. So one of the other things that you do in the book is you make sales pretty simple. First of all, start with you, understand what you're passionate about, understand what your comfort zone is. But take us through the three steps that you have for getting people to say yes to you. Okay, well, there's there's two sets of three steps. I'm going to go with the first, which is the actual alignment marketing formula, or what I call the new ABCs. Alignment is exactly what you just talked about. Where and and here's a this is a sad statistic, and it's recent. I'm pretty sure it was from HubSpot did a survey. Fifty five percent of people say they feel they're selling the wrong product. I say to myself, then, then why are you selling it? What's keeping you there? There's so many products to sell. These are like entrepreneurs that are feeling like they're selling? And sales team and corporate salespeople too. Across the board, salespeople. Wow. Yeah, who responded to a survey. 55% of the people who they surveyed say they're selling the wrong product. What that says to me is innately, they know they don't have a connection to it. Mm. So- I'm going to give a quick example of this first of the three. So it's alignment, belief, consistency. And you touched on it already. Let's say somebody loves to work out, but they don't think they can make money at working out. They're not, you know, some celebrity star. But you can make money by being somebody who loves to work out. You could sell fitness equipment. You could sell gym memberships. You can you can do coaching about why it's important to be fit and healthy. There's tons of information out there. And there's, you know, there's plenty of ways to sell something and make money doing what you love to do, mm-hmm. whether it's corporate or an mm-hmm. entrepreneur, mm-hmm. right? So that's what I mean by alignment. And when you're aligned, then it's really easy to find people who are interested. Social media has made it so easy to find people who want to engage in those conversations. They're Mm -hmm. looking for fitness equipment. Go where people are talking about fitness equipment or they're comparing gym memberships. Go where they're talking about joining gyms or any any place where they're having a conversation about fitness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Belief is the key ingredients right in the middle because it's the one that causes breakdown the most. So think of belief for, for avoiding breakdowns. When we 
know that we are passionate about something, that we're good at it, that we can talk about it, belief becomes automatic Mm. because we Mm. believe in ourselves. A company to ask us to believe in them requires us to trust. There won't always be everything we trust about the company. The minute we have a kink in the belief, we no longer feel wonderful about representing that product or service. Mm. So we have to have 100% belief. And the only place we can have that is in what we know we can stand on for ourselves. From there, then we take consistent action. And this is where the other three come in. It's under consistent action. Building an audience, engaging with that audience, and then building trust to the point where you can make suggestions and sell products or services to that audience. So consistency is three parts, build, engage, and sell to your audience. Alignment, belief, consistency are the three new ABCs of sales. Okay. I I think I get that, but let me play it back and see. If you follow this, anybody can do it because you're just seeking out others who have interests that are similar to yours. You're engaging with them. And when you get to know them, you're making suggestions just like you would to a friend. Anybody it's, can do that. Yes, that's it. Engagement is not, how do I present my product? No, engagement is, what what's something you enjoy, Sarah? Something you're passionate, you love outside of business, just out of curiosity. Rowing. Okay. I'm not a good rower yet. My husband's into kayaking. That requires rowing. It's a different kind of rowing than you. And I, if I wanted to meet people, so let's say I represent a pain product. Sarah's just told me that there's a whole audience of people who row. If I'm also excited about rowing, I'd go in finding rowing groups on Facebook, on Instagram, through hashtags, maybe even on LinkedIn professional rowers, I would get in there and start having chats about rowing, not about my pain products. And then as I'm getting to know people in the group and we're wanting to have conversations outside of the group, at some point, Sarah's probably going to tell me, oh my God, I rowed more than I have ever rowed before. My arms are really killing me. She might not ask me if I know of anything, but I might say if Sarah and I know each other well enough, I might say, you know what? I was having the same experience. You know, Sarah, I'm just getting going with rowing with kayak. So it happens to me all the time. I found this thing that's really working for me. Do you want me to show you where I buy it? There you go. Suggestion. It's a suggestion. Where I buy it. Even if I'm representing it, where I buy it. Yes, I get it. I get it. Just the suggestion. Anybody can do it, you know? And when you explain it that way, I understand why it's so bold in your book. You can ditch the script because because that's the process that you're really going through. I am not prepared to sell to you through your objections. I'm prepared to be friends with you, Sarah. And when you are a good friend of mine and I'm a good friend of yours, you're going to let down your guards. You're going to tell me the things that are going on in your life. And if I have something that can help you, I'm going to suggest it. And there is when selling becomes service to others. Perfect. Perfect. That makes it all very easy. Very easy. Stacey, you told me before we started this that you had something that you would share with our readers for free. And you entitled it, Eight Steps to Close a Sale. You want to tell our listeners where they might find that? Yes. So remember what I just said about build, engage, sell. You can take those three stages, we'll call them stages, and break them down into actually eight steps. Mm, And that is my website. You can get it for free. Download the video where I teach you what the eight steps are. And then I ask you questions so that you can fulfill the eight steps. And it's on my website, stacyannhall.com forward slash courses, C-O-U-R-S-E-S. It's the first one. And it says it's a free download. 
And again, it's called Eight Steps to Close the Sale. And I want to commend Stacy's new book to you, Selling from Your Comfort Zone, The Power of Alignment Marketing. So Stacy, for all of those entrepreneurs out there who are like me and think that they can't do sales, is there any question that I should have asked you that they should hear the answer to? Well, I, I appreciate that. And what I'm going to say, Sarah, let's pretend you are one of those people. I would say, have you ever made a friend in your life? Yes, I have. Okay. So see, I'm actually going to ask you the question. So when you made the friend, where did you meet? Just think of any friends you made. Where did you meet them? I've met a lot at the boathouse. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when you first met them, you didn't know them. You might have been introduced by somebody, but you still had to start a conversation. Correct. What are the kinds of things you like to talk about at first? Like when you first meet somebody, what would be the first thing you would ask them? How was your row this morning? Did you That's see the eagle? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's how. Were you were you being a salesperson at that moment? No. Mm -mm. You were being a friend. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else to say. We just built friendship. All of us have built friendships. Let's use social media to forget that we know how to make friends. Make friends, you will make sales. Stacey, you've been a joy to talk to. I feel so encouraged just oh, by this you. little conversation. So thanks so much for being with us today. Sarah, it has been a joy. I, I loved every question you asked me. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the KTS Success Factor Podcast for Women. If you like what you are hearing, please go to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave a review. And if you would like more information on how we can help women in your organization to thrive, then go to www.sarahebrown.com. You can sign up for our newsletter, read show notes, and learn more about our podcast guests, read my blog, browse through the books, or contact us for a chat. Goodbye for now.